Have you ever walked into a room and immediately noticed how fresh the air feels? Maybe you couldn't quite put your finger on it, but it was just clean. No lingering pet smells, no dust floating in the sunlight, and definitely no musty odor from the last rainstorm. Chances are, there was an air purifier quietly doing its job in the background. But how exactly do these machines work? How do air purifiers trap odors and allergens that seem so invisible, yet affect how we breathe, sleep, and feel every day? Today, we're diving into the fascinating science behind air purifiers, those silent heroes that turn polluted indoor air into a breath of fresh air. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of how air purifiers work, it's important to understand the problem they're solving. Indoor air, contrary to what many believe, can be more polluted than outdoor air. Dust mites, pollen, mold spores, pet dander, volatile organic compounds from cleaning products, and even odors from cooking or smoking. All of these particles float in the air we breathe every day. And for people with allergies, asthma, or chemical sensitivities, this invisible cocktail of contaminants can trigger all kinds of symptoms, from sneezing and headaches to difficulty breathing and poor sleep. That's where air purifiers come in. These machines are designed to clean up the mess we can't see, providing relief and protection in a world full of airborne irritants. At their core, Air purifiers work by drawing in air from the surrounding environment, running it through a series of filters or treatment processes, and then releasing it back into the room, cleaner and safer to breathe. Think of it as a high-tech sponge, but instead of soaking up water, it absorbs microscopic particles from the air. Most air purifiers use fans to circulate air through the system, and the effectiveness of the unit depends largely on the type of filtration technology it uses. And here's where things get interesting. Different filters target different types of contaminants. When it comes to allergens, the gold standard in air purification is the HEPA filter. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air, and these filters are designed to capture 99.97% of particles as small as 0.3 microns. That includes pollen, mold spores, dust mites, and even some bacteria. Inside a HEPA filter, you'll find a dense web of randomly arranged fibers. As air passes through, particles get trapped in these fibers via a combination of interception, impaction, and diffusion. Three mechanisms that sound complicated, but work seamlessly together to stop particles in their tracks. If you're someone who suffers from allergies, a purifier with a HEPA filter is one of the best defenses you can have indoors. But what about odors? After all, HEPA filters are great for solid particles, but smells from cooking pets or cigarette smoke are caused by gases and volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. These molecules are much smaller and more difficult to trap. That's where activated carbon filters come into play. Activated carbon is charcoal that's been treated with oxygen to create millions of tiny pores. These pores increase the surface area dramatically, allowing the filter to absorb odor molecules and gases. Think of it as a chemical sponge the odor molecules cling to the surface of the carbon and stay there, effectively neutralizing the smell. That's why many air purifiers include a carbon filter alongside a HEPA filter, because the two work best together. One catches particles, the other absorbs smells. Some air purifiers go beyond traditional filtration and use advanced technologies to target germs and chemical pollutants. For instance, UVC light can be used to kill bacteria, viruses, and mold spores by disrupting their DNA. While UV purifiers aren't great at removing particles or odors, they add an extra layer of protection, especially in hospitals or high-risk environments. 
Then there are ionizers, which release charged ions into the air. These ions attach to airborne particles, making them heavy enough to fall to the ground or stick to surfaces, or to be collected by an electrostatic plate inside the purifier. Finally, some purifiers use photocatalytic oxidation, a process that uses light and a catalyst like titanium dioxide to break down pollutants at the molecular level. While these sound high-tech, and they are, they're usually used in combination with filters, not as a replacement. Of course, no technology is perfect. Air purifiers can only clean the air that passes through them, so their effectiveness is limited by the size of the room, placement of the unit, and airflow patterns. And filters need to be replaced regularly. HEPA filters usually every 6 to 12 months, and carbon filters sometimes even sooner. Otherwise, they can become clogged or saturated, making them less effective or even a source of contamination themselves. And while air purifiers can make a big difference, they're not a substitute for good ventilation, cleanliness, and eliminating sources of pollution whenever possible. So, what difference do they actually make in real homes? For allergy sufferers, an air purifier can mean the difference between constant sneezing and restful nights. For pet owners, it can help control dander and those unmistakable animal smells. In cities with high pollution levels, air purifiers offer a shield against particulate matter and traffic-related toxins. And for families, especially those with young children or elderly relatives, having cleaner air isn't just a comfort, it's a health investment. Studies have even shown improvements in sleep, cognitive function, and respiratory symptoms after using air purifiers regularly. So the next time you take a deep breath and feel refreshed, remember that there's a whole system working behind the scenes. Fibers trapping dust, charcoal absorbing odors, maybe even UV lights zapping microbes. All to give you something we often take for granted. Clean, breathable air. Air purifiers may be silent, but their impact is anything but invisible. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.